So I've had a lot of people ask me, how do I use my iPad on a day-to-day -day basis? And the truth is that it has become such an integral part of my workflow that I cannot imagine being without it, especially when I'm out working remotely. Whether I'm replying to emails, editing photos, or just sketching ideas using Apple Pencil Pro, it's always within the reach. So in this video, I will take you through top five ways I use my iPad every single day within my workflow and how iPad OS 26 has made it even more useful in my day-to-day -day routine. Okay, the first thing might sound quite simple, it's emails. It's actually the thing I do most on my iPad when I'm on the go. In the past, I never actually enjoyed using emails on the iPad. It always felt limited. But with iPad OS 26, Apple has finally made some improvements, not only with regards to the whole email experience, but also the file management, which is quite key for me. You know, it's a lot more smoother now. For example, downloading documents, attaching a document to an email, downloading a document and annotating on a PDF and then reattaching to an email. It just feels like it's much more uh, of like a MacBook experience than it has been in the past. So therefore I tend to use emails more often than I have been in the past with the iPad OS 26. An experience is like desktop. So, you know, I tend not to email when I'm sitting at my desk. Uh, you know, I, I tend to do more intense tasks such as editing, you know, maybe creating contracts, maybe creating proposals for clients, um, or just doing some, you know, an intense Excel-based work. Whereas when it comes to replying emails, attaching documents, you know, going back and forth, negotiating deals with clients, I just do that on an iPad because I find that it's able to do that very easily. You know, I can, I can, as I said, I can download documents. I can even edit documents on the go, reattach a proposal to the client, and it's done very easily. And now with the file management and iPad OS 26, it feels like, you know, I am much more confident taking my iPad on with me just when I'm on the go, meeting a client. Uh, you know, uh, I don't have to always think about, oh gosh, you know, will the iPad actually perform? Will I be able to do that thing that I need? You know, will I be able to attach a document, download a document? So all that worry is now completely gone. And I can with confidence say that this is, you know, the only device I need when, uh, when it comes to that sort of workflow. Okay, the next feature that I use on my iPad the most is photo editing. And I have always used iPad for photo editing because of the touchscreen capabilities on the iPad, especially on the larger displays. Um, so I have all my photos stored on a Google Drive. And I do that as soon as I finish my photo shoot, I will drag all the files straight onto my Google Drive on my Mac Studio because I know when I'm on the go, I will most likely edit all those photos on my iPad. So I use a split screen feature from iPad OS 26 and I have the Google Drive on one side and I have Lightroom on the other side. And that's really good because once I drag or copy and paste those photos into the Lightroom, I can see before and after, you know, what how, how the photo looked when it was in a raw format and how does it look when I'm editing it. And also in Lightroom, you can split the screens and you can see before and after. But the point here is that with the touch screen, I can get much more precision when it comes to editing. I also have presets on the Lightroom app, so I can quickly just, based on the scenario and the photograph that I've taken and based on the scene that I was in, I can use the presets I already created, but I can still fine tune it using the touch screen in Apple Pencil Pro. So for me, the photo editing part is absolutely brilliant when it comes to iPads. Uh, I don't have the same experience when I use Mac, and some of you might have a different experience, especially when it comes to desktop use with Photoshop. But in my experience, I found that it's a lot quicker, it's easier. And you know, because I upload these photos on social media, I have all the social media on my iPad. So it's a lot easier for me to just edit the photo in Lightroom and then bam, you know, just goes out straight on social media. I don't have to switch between devices. So yes, when it comes to the second most used feature on the iPad or what I use the iPad the most, uh, after emails is photo editing. And as I said, that's because it's touch screen, it's more versatile. I can use Apple Pencil, I can use my fingers to fine tune the settings. I can also use my keyboard shortcuts. So, you know, it's kind of three in one when it comes to that photo editing aspect of it. And also I can quite easily share it with anyone, uh, whether it's WhatsApp, or whether it's iMessage, whether it's Instagram, you know, X, uh, YouTube, any social media for that matter, because all those apps exist within the iPad OS. And that takes me to the third most common way I use my iPad within my workflow. And that's social media and just media consumption in general. In the past, I never used to use iPad for social media, uh, especially when it comes to Instagram or YouTube. But over the past many weeks, um, there have been some significant updates to these apps, especially the Instagram app, and it's much more optimized for iPad now. And I found myself using iPad much more than I have been in the past for social media. And as I said before, photo editing is in the second most common way I use my iPad. 
and then social media right follows right after that is because you know once I'm done with the photo editing, I upload it straight onto the social media using my iPad. And I do the same for the videos. Once I've edited the videos on my Mac Studio, you know they upload it onto the Google Drive as a final version. And all I do when I'm on the go is just drag those videos onto the YouTube Studio and upload that video straight onto YouTube. And I have all the you know details ready on a on a Google Doc. So you know it, it's kind of become my not only the media consumption device, but it's also a, a device which I use to manage my social media, which has never been possible in the past. But with iPad OS 26 and also with the new updated apps like as I said Instagram and Edit app from Instagram. Instagram, it has enabled me to use my iPad more and more. And that's also a great thing for me because that means I'm using my phone even less. You know, I, I don't I hate being on my phone too much because it just feels like I'm draining and consuming a lot of stuff uh, from from the smaller screen. Uh, and you know, it's not great for your posture, it's not great for your, you know, for your mental health. And I try to use my phone less and less. But, you know, by dividing my work into different devices, it's more intentional. You know, I turn my iPad on because I have to respond to an email. I turn my iPad on because I have to edit in the photo and I have to upload on social media. So, yeah, so I, I use iPad, you know, very much for social media now. And, uh, you know, I found that I use my phone less and less when it comes to uploading stuff on social media, comment, responding to comments, you know, engaging with and socializing with the communities online. It feels like it's much more of a better kind of mobile slash um, desktops of experience and this is where you know things are done right when it comes to iPad OS. And the fourth way I use my iPad is simple but constant it's just browsing you know whether it's safari or google chrome i found myself is a lot quicker to just turn on one of those browsers and just research what i need to research you know uh, to turn on your laptop or your macbook or mac studio then go onto a browser you know maybe just browse web but do some shopping it feels like it's much needs much more effort you know you need to go to your desk you need to do move away from the people you're sitting around with and what i found is when i'm browsing internet maybe i want to book a ticket for my family and i can just do it with my ipad and everyone can interact and 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 be sitting next to me so you know it's a lot easier to do that on a, on a touch screen as well because you can just touch and you can just browse a lot, a lot easier than than on a, on a laptop so yeah so i do find myself browsing a lot on the internet using my ipad and also with the new ipad os uh, update it feels like the safari and the chrome have much more become like desktop browsers so your experience is a lot better you know you can actually do more on the browsers than you have in the past. You can save different tabs into different folders. You can quickly turn on those tabs. You can use the Apple ecosystem to sync all those across multiple devices. So it has become a much better experience when it comes to just browsing internet. And also it's really good for research. You know, when I want to go and read an article, it's a lot easier to do that on an iPad than on a laptop. And it's so easy and it's always there for you. As I said at the beginning of the video, you know, the this iPad, you know, is the great thing about this device is that it's always there, you know, as long as you have the battery and it's charged, you can just turn it on and just get on with it. You know, you don't you don't have the friction of turning on a device, signing in, you know, logging into your profile and then going onto the, you know, the, the application, turning it on, then start your work, right? It's iPad is instant. You know, as soon as you open the screen, as soon as you flick up the, the case, you you are on and you're ready to work, which is great. And that's why I love this device so much. And finally, the fifth most common way I use my iPad and probably the most underrated when it comes to the features the iPad has to offer, especially with Apple Pencil Pro, and that is sketching and taking notes. I'm a big fan of, you know, taking notes digitally because I think it's a lot easier and you can organize them in a better way. And I'm also a student part time, so I learn languages. And for me to have something which is always accessible is really important because the thing about languages is that, or, or for that matter, any course or any study that you do, the more access you have to things, the easier it is. You know, For example, if I have taken a note from a lecture and I don't have the device with me like a laptop, then in order for me to revise that when I'm on the train an hour not doing anything, I have to go back to my you know, house or I have to go back to my desk and then turn on my laptop. iPad being all the time with me, especially when it's connected iPad, you know, it's a lot easier to just have everything synced on your device. And once you're done taking the notes from lecture, when you're sitting on a you know on a commute or you're just sitting on a couch or having a coffee um, or if you're out and about in a cafe, you can just go ahead and do your revision. You know, especially with me, as I said, the language course requires a lot of memorizations, like just memorizing words, just memorizing vocabularies. And for me, having access to that is so crucial. And I couldn't do that by just having pen and paper, right? I would have to carry maybe, you know, two or three different notebooks uh, in case I need X, Y, or Z. But with digitalizing your notes, you, you can easily do that on one device. And with Apple Pencil Pro, it's just such a good experience. Apple have really improved the experience you get when it comes to writing. 
you know, I don't have any particular screen protectors when it comes to writing on the iPad because I do like the iPad's OLED display. I don't want to, you know, kind of limit that with a screen protector. But there are other screen protectors that actually give you more paper-like feel. But in my case, I don't actually use screen protectors. But I do find, even regardless of that, the experience of writing on the screen, it's, it's actually surprisingly a lot better than I thought it might be. Um, and I've used other tablets in the past from other brands, but no one comes close to the experience you get on iPad. So iPad with Apple Pencil Pro, taking notes, annotating on PDF. You know, it's not just about learning courses or just doing studies. It's also when it comes to annotating PDFs. You know, I sign client contracts. I annotate on client contracts, going back and forth and you know, negotiate different terms with them. That only happens in a in a much more I would say in a quicker way when I'm using my iPad because I can just do that with Apple Pencil. And it's also really good for tutorials. For example, I had to cheat someone the other day how to edit a certain part of the video on DaVinci. And rather than getting on a video call, which I didn't have time for, I quickly annotated on the screenshot I've taken of the DaVinci Resolve and kind of showed with the arrow what to do next. And he was easily able to get it. And the same thing applies when I'm in the meetings, for example. So I use my iPad, you know, to sketch my ideas and my, my thought patterns. And rather than explain to my team, you know, what do I mean by, you know, doing X, Y, and Z, it's easier for me just to draw on an iPad and explain to them. And you know, by, by doing th things visually, it kind of sits in your brain a lot better than just saying it. So I do find myself surprisingly using iPad for note taking a lot more than I had thought I would. And that's why it makes it really worth for you to, you know, when you buy an iPad, just don't buy an iPad. Look at adding accessories that will actually help you get most of this powerful machine. You know, add a Magic Keyboard, add an Apple Pencil Pro. You know, if you don't have budget for Magic Keyboard, Apple Pencil Pro, there are alternate products out there who can do pretty much the same job. But the point is, you need to utilize this device to its maximum capacity um, so to get most out of the, the investment you've made by purchasing this device. It's not really cheap, obviously. So, you know, you need to make sure that you're getting most of it. Otherwise, don't bother getting one. And that's my honest opinion. So, yeah, so with that, we've come to the end of this video. And those are my five most common ways I use my iPad and workflow and hopefully that's been helpful to you guys if you're looking to buy an ipad or already have an ipad but you don't know how to fit that within your workflow hopefully this video has helped you out you know and you know when you purchase such an expensive product it's really important that you utilize this product correctly and you incorporate it into workflow where in it fits better you know i've seen so many videos and so many blogs out there who are trying to compare ipad to a macbook and how they replace a MacBook with iPad. I mean, don't do that because iPad is not meant to replace your laptops. It's meant to do what iPad is really good at. You know, I've explained in my previous videos how iPad should be using as an iPad and not as a MacBook. You can check it out on my channel and I strongly recommend you check out my iPad series to give you a bit of an idea about how do I use my iPad and my workflow. But hopefully this video has been helpful, as I said before, in terms of helping you kind of position this iPad in your workflow the way I have. And hopefully if you are looking to purchase an iPad, have given you a bit more clarity on what is iPad really good at? And especially if you've got something similar like I have in terms of use case, then you know, you'll know you be able to relate to that. And hopefully this has been this has been helpful. And if it has, make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you for staying all the way to the end. It means a lot to me. I'll see you in the next one.